So letter H, let's check whether the validity conditions are met. Provided below, provided below is a graph of the sample data. So taking a look at this data, it doesn't look like it's highly skewed. And we have N equals 48, which is definitely greater than 40. So feeling good, so it doesn't look highly skewed. So I'm saying um, that N greater than 40 looks good. So, and there's a large population. Population. We, like we talked about before, there are more than 480 Cal Poly students, so the validity conditions are met. Sketch the null distribution of the sample averages. Remember, when we take, if I sampled another intro stats class of 48, do you think I would get exactly the same number, that same average, or do samples vary? And hopefully think, oh, right. Samples vary. So this is the null distribution of those sample averages. The center is going to be mu is 30. We don't have the population standard deviation. So that's kind of a problem. So we, since we have that, are we going to use the normal or are we going to use the T? Well, we're going to use the T. The T distribution for that shape of the null um, distribution of sample means. Remember, if we knew what sigma was, we could use that population standard deviation. We could use normal approximation, but since we don't, we can't. Now, what do I know? I know that mu is 30. I need to find my standard deviation, but I don't have sigma, so I'm going to do s divided by the square root of n. So it's going to be 17.19 divided by the square root of 48 and we get 2.481. And once again, we have to do this as we don't have sigma. And I even wanted to call that out. Recall that because this, this population standard deviation is unknown, we use the sample standard, sample standard deviation being represented by S to estimate the standard deviation of the distribution of sample means. Once again, this is called the standard error of the mean. On the graph above, so we're good there. Let's see. Locate the observed sample mean of 35.29. And remember, we're wondering how extreme or more extreme. So we're looking in this tail and shade the area of the graph that pertains to the p-value. Remember, we were looking at greater than 35.29. So that is the probability that the sample average turns out to be 35.29 or higher if Cal Poly students use SPF 30 on average. How many standard deviations away from 30 is the observed value of 35.29? Now remember, we're going to be looking at the T distribution, so we're going to not find the Z score, we're going to find the T score. We're going to take that observed value from the sample, minus that population parameter, divided by the standard deviation that we found, and we get 2.13. So we already know before we look up a p-value that there is evidence against the null because we're more than two standard deviations, two standard errors away. Remember with the t though, we also need to consider degrees of freedom. df is degrees of freedom, and that's n minus one. In this case, it's going to be 48 minus one, which is 47. So now we want to use the t-table, because once again, we don't know our sigma, our population standard deviation. We're going to use that t-table to find the p-value. So let's, I'm going to scroll down. If you get motion sick, please close your eyes. I drew this little picture here. What I want to show you is that we're looking in the tails this time. A one-sided test is going to look in one tail. A two-sided test is going to look in, um, in both tails. But the degrees of freedom, what you want to do is find, in this column here, the closest we have. To be conservative, we're going to round down. Let's see, we don't have 47, but we do have 40. So we're going to look at 40. And then we're going to go inside the table to see, what our, to see where our t-score falls. And our t-score falls somewhere in here. Remember, it is 2.13. Then we want to scoot up here to do the one tail. So we know our p-value is somewhere between 0 0.01 and 0 0.025. So remember, the t-value is on the inside of the table here. And we have 
have to go up to get our p-value. You'll notice we don't get an exact p-value. And that seems weird after what we did with the z-score. But the problem is with the degrees of freedom, it would just get too complicated to, um, to find things more exactly. Can you find them more exactly? Definitely. I actually did this with the applet. And the applet told me that the, the exact p-value, based on the information I input, is 0 0.0191, which is right in here. So close your eyes, please, if you get sick. Going back up, we're going to use the degree of freedom of 40 on the table. The t-score of 2.13, and see where that falls. It most likely will not fall exactly on one of the, the values in the table. And the p-value is between 0 0.01 and 0 0.025. Remember, you always, when you write these, you want to go from low to high. And like I said, the applet, the calculation ended up, when it ran through the applet, it was 0 0.0191.